Hero of the Rails. It was summer on Sojor. The sky was bright blue, the fields were full of flowers, and the birds sang sweetly. As Thomas filled up with water, he felt very happy. All over Sodor, Thomas's friends were buffeted and blasted on their tracks. Later, Thomas and his friends were at Nafford. They were very puzzled. That afternoon, Thomas and Percy were huffing and puffing at Gordon's hill with their load as Spencer popped by. Next, Spencer caught up with Gordon. Toby was huffing and puffing slowly to a junction as Spencer stopped by. Edward and James were chugging cheerfully along as Spencer slowed. That night, the engines could only talk about Spencer. The next day, Thomas was at Brenton Docks being coupled up to a flat car of heavy machinery. Thomas was furious, and so were the other engines. This time, Spencer had gone too far. The soda engines didn't scare Spencer. An idea had bubbled in his boiler. Spencer smiled as he slid away. Early the next morning, in the cold light of dawn, Thomas and his friends waited for Spencer. Then they saw him coming and stopped. The tracks were clear for Spencer and Thomas and both coupled up to the freight cars as Edward stopped in front of them. Edward blew his whistle as the contest began. The watched as they blew their whistles long and strong. Thomas and Spencer raced around the island. They clickety clacked along the tracks. They whooshed through the countryside and hopped the hills. Thomas was struggling up the hill. He was puffing, panting, and his axles ached. At last, he reached the top. Then there was trouble. There was a clank. Thomas gasped. Thomas raced down one hill and right out the next. Thomas's freight cars pushed on and on through a junction where Spencer was waiting and bumped into some potato cars. Potatoes bounced everywhere, but Thomas sped on into some flat cars of jam barrels. Sticky jam flew in the air and landed all over Thomas, but still he went on and found himself on some old rickety track. Ahead, Thomas could see a thick wall of bushes. With a scrunch of the crunch, Thomas crashed through the bushes and came to a stop. Thomas looked around. After the racing and rattling, it was very quiet. Everything was very quiet. Thomas didn't know what to do. Then he heard a voice. Thomas looked around. There was no one there. He waited hardly daring to puff. Very slowly, Thomas puffed through the bushes. The branches crackled and crunched. Then he gasped. His eyes popped wide with wonder. There, on the other side of the bushes, was a very old engine from Japan. It was broken and rusty. Thomas felt scared. He didn't dare speak. Then the old engine smiled at him. It was a little frightened smile, but it made the old engine look kind and gentle, and it made Thomas feel less scared. The old Japanese engine smiled again. Thomas wanted to smile too, but he felt like his mind was empty. He didn't know whether to speak, to for help, or race backwards as fast as he could chuff. But he didn't move. He couldn't take his eyes off this extraordinary engine. Thomas was amazed. But Thomas could see that his new friend who was once master of the railway was now old, emotional, alone, and scared. So Thomas made a decision. Hero made the biggest smile that he had done in a long, long time. Thomas just smiled with pride. Later that morning, Thomas is at the Soldor Steamworks. He got cleaned up and was now having his brakes mended. He liked the Steamworks with all the hustle, bustle, sparks, and spanners. It was lively and friendly. And there was Victor, who was an old friend of his. 
Thomas had almost forgotten about the contest of strength with Spencer. His boy was a little bit excited over Hero. But he really wanted to tell Victor, but he knew he couldn't. Other engines might hear, and someone might have to tell Sir Topham Hat. Spencer was shocked! Then he slid away, sneering. Behind Kevin, Thomas found something rather interesting. It was a flat car with an old green cylinder on it. That afternoon, Thomas was working on his branch line as well as the main line. Percy puffed up. As Thomas went back to the steamworks, he was pleased it was very quiet. So Thomas coupled up to the flat car and went away to the tracks that led to Hero's hiding place. Suddenly, he heard a clatter of wheels and pounding pistons and even a whistle of a big engine behind him. Thomas went faster and faster into the siding and hid behind the trees. Spencer came closer and closer. Then he reversed. Hero was happy to see Thomas. Thomas's engineer and fireman unloaded the old cylinder. Thomas smiled and steamed quickly away and popped back towards Timoth. He rounded the bend when he gasped! That night, Thomas told his friends all about the contest of strength with Spencer. He was about to tell them about Hero when the fat controller came. Now Thomas didn't dare tell his friends all about Hero. The fat controller has spoken. No broken engines.